Well, last week we had those very challenging words from Jesus. After Peter confesses that he is the Christ, Jesus as the Messiah corrects their understanding of Messiah and says he's going to Jerusalem to overthrow the power of sin. And obviously we were called to think about ourselves, how we can allow Christ to overthrow the power of sin in our own hearts. Well, this weekend, Jesus doesn't let off the pedal. He continues to challenge us and continues to uh, really ask a lot of us. And, and this weekend in particular, I think Christ is asking us to really reflect on where jealousy and selfish ambition exist in our own hearts. We heard from St. James in the second reading that wherever jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every kind of foul practice. Or you could say, wherever jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is destruction. There is destruction. Well, one example of this, it comes, is a very good example of this, especially jealousy, comes from the musical Hamilton. So for those who have seen it, you know this, but Hamilton is all about, uh, there's a lot of good things in it. There's kind of grace and reconciliation. But the other side of it, the dark side of the story, is the jealousy and the ambition that rule and kind of are the motivating factors for both Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton. Well, if you, the start of the musical begins with Aaron Burr saying, how does this guy, this one who comes from poor means, who's kind of a, a servant, who has a single mom, how does he become this man of political influence? Well, really, you hear in those words from Mr. Burr that he is jealous of all that Alexander has been able to accomplish. By the end of the play, right, we know in history Aaron Burr is the one who shoots and kills Hamilton. The end of the play, right after ha Hamilton is murdered, there's Aaron Burr singing the song, reflecting on what has just happened. And he says this, I should have realized that the world was wide enough for the both of us. I should have realized that the world is wide enough for both Hamilton and me. And what's really, I think, powerful about that statement and what's really sad about it is Aaron Burr recognizes that it's his jealousy, his irrational anger at Hamilton's success that leads him to kill him. But in murdering and ending the life of Hamilton, he's also ruined his own. His whole life is destroyed because he's done this horrible act. Well, jealousy can destroy us. You know, St. Thomas Aquinas, I just said it, but he defines it as this irrational anger at someone else's success. I've been reading this book, uh, The 12 Rules of Life, I think is what it's called, by Jordan Peterson, and people either love or hate him, but it's been a good book for me over the past few weeks, and he says this about jealousy. He said, you can be good at anything, and that one thing you're good at, you can find someone better. And when you find that other person who's better than you at this thing, you look incompetent. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, he's kind, of, he's kind of right. You think of like a really good high school quarterback, well, you put him next to Tom Brady, he looks kind of like a loser, you know? <laughs> you can be good at one thing, and you can always find someone better. Well, here's the thing, jealousy destroys us. Think about it this way. Psychologists agree on this. Social media has good things. I don't want to sound like I'm on a war against social media. I have Facebook, as many of you know. But social media also has a dark side. Because one of the things that they've noticed with social media is the more you use it, the more that we use Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is, the higher the chances are that we experience anxiety and depression. Why? Why would the more that we use Facebook mean increase our chances of, of feeling anxiety and depression? Well, the reason is simple. We put our best selves on the internet. We want our best selves out there. So for example, because it's NFL season and I just wanted to show my support for the Lions before they're too bad, you know, <laughs> before tomorrow night. <laughs> I put a picture of me with a lion's jersey on over my clerics. Well, it's an old picture. And so it was very humbling for me because I saw my sister the other day and she said, you know, is that an old picture? I said, yeah. She goes, yeah, I can tell you, you're a little thinner. 
And I'm like, well, that's not the reason I put it up, but you're not wrong, I am. But the point is, is we can put the self we want out there for everyone to see. But here's the problem. When we spend time on these things and we go through it, oh man, that family gets so much better vacations than we get. Oh, their house is beautiful, it's better than my house. Oh, that, has a, that person has a better car. Oh, her hair is just so much better than my hair. She has hair, praise <laughs> Jesus. You know, all these things. We can look at all these things and think, man, their life is just better than mine. And then, of course, jealousy leads to destruction. Leads to destruction. We lose our peace and we lose kind of a sense of what it, of our self-worth. So there's a kind of a modern example of how jealousy can destroy, but what about selfish ambition? I could use Hamilton, but I'm gonna go a different route. I'm gonna talk about something I've, I've used before, but Harry Potter, Harry Potter. You know, great story of good conquering evil, so I, I do think it's an okay thing to read for those who wonder, but you have this character, Voldemort. And Voldemort, for those who don't know the story, is simply, he's an evil guy, he's the evil character in the story, and the whole thing is, he desires this, he has a selfish ambition to be the most powerful and to rule the world, and he doesn't care who he has to hurt, kill, or manipulate on the way. It's all about him. But the interesting thing is this, J.K. Rowling describes him in the beginning of the book as this handsome black-haired man. And by the end of the story, he's this ugly, disfigured, has no nose, bald, ugly man, you know? It's his evil actions that have destroyed his figure. But even more so, his evil actions, motivated by his selfish ambition, has torn apart his soul. It's destroyed him completely, right? All because of his selfish ambition. Well, what's a modern day example of this? Well, I think the best example right now, it, it kind of comes from our gospel a little bit, but you know, do you recognize that? Here is Jesus, our wonderful God, who says, I'm gonna suffer, I'm gonna die for you. And what are the disciples arguing about? Who's the greatest? Hey, I'm better than you. Oh yeah, Jesus, likes, Jesus loves me more than you. You're kind, of, you're kind of not so good, right? And the moment where Jesus is telling them about how he's going to love them perfectly, they're arguing about who's going to be the greatest. Well, here's where I think we can pray for all of the priests, because I think this isn't just our apostles. This can happen in priests today. And how does it happen in priests today? Well, it happens when priests get motivated by selfish ambition, and they want the best parish. They want the best resources. They want to have the most people coming into the church every spring, at Easter. They want to be known for all the wrong reasons. Their success, but here's the thing. To me, success is not the biggest parish with the most resources. To me, success is the parish that brings people into an experience of Jesus Christ, because that's what we're about. But the problem is that competitive atmosphere can exist even in priesthood. And it's a challenge for us priests to remember, we can't compare ourselves to the other guy at the other parish. We're on the same team. And we should rejoice in their successes. So what's the answer? What's the remedy to our jealousy and the selfish ambition that, we can, that can exist in our own hearts? Well, I propose to you that the answer to these, to these things are simply love, humility, and gratitude. Love, humility, and gratitude. Humility. Humility is that thing where it's, you can define it in many ways. One of my favorite definitions of humility is, God loves me for me in all my strengths and weaknesses. But you could also define humility as in, a, in, a, in this way, in the sense that, think of a family, you have kid, you, the children and the siblings, and you see your mom's love for your brother. You're like, you know what? My mom's love for my brother is a beautiful thing. And it doesn't take away from the fact that I too am loved by my mother. <laughs> they are loved and so am I. Their love doesn't mean that I'm less loved. That's humility. Gratitude, being willing. If you wanna root out any sort of jealousy and envy in your life, gratitude is the way to do it. Because we're always gonna want what other people have if we don't know that we are blessed. We don't recognize how blessed we are through God. And so, one of the examples of this that personally inspires me is 
Father Lam Lee. I don't know if you know Father Lam Lee, but Father Lam is the pastor, the first pastor of St. John Paul II in Cedar Springs. And the reason why I love this man is because he is probably one of the most humble people I've ever met. He doesn't want attention. He just wants to bring people to Jesus Christ. The other beautiful thing about him is he, well, he is successful. He brings people to the church. He is able to, I think they've had 15 or more people come to the church every Easter for the past several years. Well, that's an amazing thing. But the reason I bring him up is this. He is doing a great job. And it inspires me. So out of love for him and for hopefully all of you, I pray to the Lord, you know what, Lord, I'm grateful. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus for Father Lam Lee, that we have him in this diocese. But help me be inspired by him to love my people like he does. What a beautiful gift he is to the church. So if we want to root out jealousy and selfish ambition, the prayer that we need to make to the Lord this weekend is this. Lord, replace any jealousy and ambition in my heart with love, humility, and gratitude.